Hey guys, back with another topic. We are doing uh, common presenting symptoms in family medicine practice. So next is allergic rhinitis. It's very common. What is it? It's an inflammation of nasal mucosa that is triggered by an allergic reaction. Classification seasonal symptoms during a specific time of the year. Common allergens here is trees, grass, wheat pollens, airborne moles, etc. Perennial symptoms throughout the year with a variation in severity. Common allergies, dust mites, animal dander, moles. Persistent allergic rhinitis may lead to chronic rhinosinusitis. It is a very annoying and uh, like irritating situation for the patient. Epidemiology affects approximately 40% of children and 20 to 30% of adults, which is uh, like a very big range. Uh, prevalence has increased in developed countries, particularly in the past two decades. Associated with asthma, eczema, sinusitis, and otitis media. Etiology. Increased IgE levels to certain allergens. Excessive degranulations of mast cells. Release of inflammatory mediators, that is histamine. And cytokines, local inflammatory reaction. Uh, it is... I don't have the, like the statistics or the proof for this, but I think that it is because of the lack of exposure to dust uh, for in children when the thymus gland is developing. Uh, and so I think extreme cleanliness is harmful for the children. They should be exposed to dust. They should be allowed to play in sand, in mud, and this helps them. Uh, expose their immunity to different kind of uh, organisms, different kind of uh, pathogens, and then they develop immunity. After you become sick, there are some things called memory cells, and which help you prevent immunity. Even gut immunity is developed in a similar way. So once in a while, I will eat a grape which I just dropped, or I eat, I don't like my food to be extremely, extremely clean because I also like to keep um, my keep my gut immune system nice and keep exposing it to different pathogens. It should be able to digest anything. Etiology. We did that. Assessment. Identify the allergens. Take an environmental occupational history. Ask about related conditions. For example, atopic dermatitis. Atopic dermatitis means a uh, localized allergic reaction. Asthma, sinusitis, and family history. Management. Minimize exposure, exposure to allergens. As we all know that allergy is incurable and exposing Minimizing the allergen is the only way to stop it. Most important aspect of management, often sufficient, may take months. Uh, maintain hygiene, saline nasal rinses, pharmacological agents, oral second generation antihistamines, first line therapy for mild symptoms. Cetrisin, reactin, fexofenadine, allegra. Loratidine, Claritin. So they give fexofenadine, that is Allegra, when they don't want the person to sleep. For example, if it's a student or driver, then they give fexofenadine, Loratidine, Claritin. Uh, intranasal corticosteroids for moderate to severe persistent symptoms. Expect more than one month of consistent use to see results. So it is like more than one month. Intranasal decongestants. Use must be limited for less than five days to uh, to avoid rhinitis medicamentosa. Allergy skin testing. For patients with chronic rhinitis whose symptoms are not conserved, uh, controlled by the conservative and pharmacological therapy, may identify allergens to include in the immunotherapy treatment. Immunotherapy, allergy shots. Result for severe cases unresponsible, unresponsive to pharmacological agents. 
consists of periodically, usually weekly, subcutaneous injection of custom prepared solution of one or more antigens to which the patient is allergic. So these injections are supposed to be given weekly, subcutaneously and usually the clinic stores these injections for the patient. The patient comes in and gets this injection. It is supposed to be in uh, stored in a fridge just like a vaccine between 2 to 8 degrees Celsius temperature and it degenerates when it's outside. So you have to handle it carefully. Differential diagnosis of allergic rhinitis, it is acute viral infection that is common cold, vasomotor rhinitis, deviated septum, uh, deviated septum can cause extreme uh, aeration of one of the nostril which results in dryness, inflammation, ex uh, crusting, nasal polyps, acute chronic sinusitis, drug induced rhinitis, rhinitis medicamentosa. Rebound nasal congestion occurs when prolonged use more than 5 to 7 days of vasoconstrictive intranasal medications. Patient may become dependent requiring more frequent dosing to achieve the same decongestant effect. Symptoms of GAD. I think this means general anesthesia. I don't know what this is. But it says GAD. And C. Rest. And I see rest. So I think GAD they are trying to refer to general anxiety disorder. Yeah, it just came in the middle of allergic rhinitis, so I wasn't able to uh, see what they are saying. But now I know that it's general anxiety disorder. It should be in the next page. It's it's here anxiety. So that's the end of this video about allergic rhinitis. Uh, my take on this disease is that uh, they also uh, provide um, uh, nasal decongestants uh, very frequently. And the problem with that is that in the long run, if the patient keeps using it, then they ca can cause thinning of the arteries and then you can have like a uh, epistaxis problem and you can also lose your uh, ability to smell like there can be an atrophy of the mucosa so it is not very much recommended uh, taking prevention from the allergy causing uh, system or material is the best way to manage this kind of symptoms people who have these allergic symptoms like rhinitis, rhinorrhea, then lacrimation because of all these allergens, they tend to take cetirizine like once in two days, even without symptoms to just stop it from coming back to them. You can also take Avil, which is chlorpheronamide. The, it is, it, the problem is the sleepiness that it's caused, but it is also very common medication okay guys bye